today I'm going to be going through every single thriller that I've ever read, plus some of the horror books that I've read, which is very little. I have read a lot of thrillers. I started really liking them after I read The Girl on the Train, and then I just kind of started finding more and more. A lot of them are very similar in how they're written and their titles. I mean, we got girl, 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 woman, woman. Like, I thought it'd be fun to go through every single thriller that I've read and just tell you about them and whether I liked it or didn't like it. Okay, let's just get right into it, because this is going to be kind of a long one. One of my most favorite thrillers that's pretty basic, but it's definitely one of my favorites I've ever read is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I love this book. I also love the movie so much. It's very long, but I highly, highly recommend reading the book before you watch the movie because the movie is good, but reading the book, you just kind of, everything, it's like, you don't know what's going to happen and, like, who's, it's just, it's so much better than just seeing the movie. You have to read the book first. Okay, so this book follows this couple, Nick and Amy Dunn. And they basically look like they have the most perfect life. Amy's parents wrote these books about her as she grew up and they have a lot of money and they basically always use Amy as like their star daughter, you know, their icon. And so Nick and Amy have been together and they look like they have the most perfect life. They're very happy and loving, but there's a lot of dark stuff that you don't know about them. So it turns out Amy is missing and now Nick is the biggest suspect in this investigation. So Nick has to kind of start putting on this facade to show that he did didn't do it, that he's innocent, he didn't kidnap or kill his wife, he's not really sure where she's at or what happened. Amy has this diary that she's been keeping for all these years and that turns up and everyone is thinking that Nick is the killer and he has to start like acting normal but he's also really mad at Amy for doing this because he doesn't know what's going on and what happened and there's all these secrets that they've been keeping. It's so good. I can't even explain how much I love this story and how I didn't honestly know what was going to happen. It's one of my most favorite thrillers and I think it's so well written. Honestly, I hate like every single character in it because they all have a dark secret. They're all not the best people, but that's what makes it so much fun. You have no idea who did what and it's just so good. I highly recommend this one. Another one by Gillian Flynn that I absolutely love is Dark Places. This story follows Libby Day. When she was seven years old, her mom and her two sisters were killed horribly and it's been this like iconic story that has followed her around for years. When Libby was seven, she testified that her 15 year old brother had killed her mom and sisters. All these years later, this group comes, they're called the Kill Club, starts questioning her again after all these years because they want to prove that her brother is innocent because they don't believe that she testified correctly. She has to go back now and relive everything that happened and all these horrible memories of this that she's been trying to suppress and that have really like hurt her a lot after all these years. She has to go back and relive everything to find out if her brother is actually innocent. I really like this one. There's so many twists and turns and mystery and intrigue in it. And I also just love the character. Usually I'm not a huge fan of the main characters in thrillers, but I actually did really enjoy this one. I like Libby a lot, though she can get kind of annoying at times. But I also really love Dark Places. Another one that by Gillian Flynn that everybody probably knows now because there's like a series is called Sharp Objects. This book follows Camille Preaker. She just finished staying at a psych ward for a while. She's currently working as a reporter. She gets assigned on this case about these two girls who have been murdered and it takes her back to her hometown where she hasn't spoken to her mom and her half-sister after all these years. She has to go stay with them and kind of start reliving her past that she's been trying to suppress and like hide from all these years. And then while she's staying there, she kind of becomes a lot closer to the case than she had anticipated. Starts really feeling connected with these two preteens who were murdered. It's very interesting, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I don't remember too much about it, but I didn't really like it as much as the other two. But that's just another thriller that I read, and I really do like Gillian Flynn's writing. And I wish that she would write more books because they're all really good. I have not seen the series though, but I'm sure it's awesome because Amy Adams is in it and I love her so much. Okay, the book that started my obsession is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawk. I wanted to read this after I saw the trailer for the movie and I was very excited about it and it has Emily Blunt in it who is amazing. But this book follows this woman named Rachel. She is divorced and she always wanted a baby and never got to have one. Now her husband is living with another woman and they have a baby living like her dream life basically in her old house and Rachel takes the same train every single day on her commute and she always passes by her old house as well as this other house her neighbors who she always kind of sees through their window or like sees them on the balcony she feels like she knows them so she starts creating her own like life for them and what their names are and everything she drinks a lot because she's very unhappy and she passes by and sees something really scary so she like goes trying to confront what's going on and gets involved in a serious murder 
It's a very dark story, kind of sad at times, but I did really enjoy this one. It really got me into thrillers and wanting to read more and kind of, I just love that aspect of the mystery, not really knowing what's going to happen. Sometimes you can guess, but I'm kind of bad at guessing, so usually I can't figure it out. But that was one of my favorites, so I highly recommend that one too. The other book by Paula Hawkins that I read is called Into the Water. This one I also don't really remember that well, and I don't think I really liked it as much as I liked The Girl on the Train. All these women are turning up dead in the water, and it just starts happening over and over again, and then one of the girls who was affected, her mom died. She gets stuck living with her aunt, who is very fearful and sad, I guess. I honestly don't remember. I feel so bad. I don't remember too much about this one, but Into the Water, I feel it doesn't follow specific stories. I feel like it's just kind of a jumble. It doesn't really resonate that well with me, but it's about basically trying to, this girl trying to figure out the mystery of why these women are turning up in, in the water. I feel bad. I don't really remember this one. I didn't really like it that much, but that's just another thriller that I read. The next one is The Good Girl by Mary Kubica. I think that's the last name. This book follows this girl named Mia who goes to the bar waiting for her boyfriend. He doesn't turn up, so she goes home with this stranger she doesn't know, thinking it's going to be a good time. He ends up taking her to this cabin that's completely secluded. Then we follow her mom and this detective as they're trying to do whatever it takes to find her daughter, who was supposed to be like this good girl, obviously, who would never do anything bad. But all this stuff starts emerging, all these secrets, I think. And yeah, that one, I don't really remember that well. I think I gave it like 3 out of 5 stars. Another one I read is called The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena. This one I absolutely loved. I was so like floored by it because I didn't have very high expectations for it, but I actually really enjoyed it. Okay, so we follow this couple named Anne and Marco who go over to their neighbor's house one night for a little dinner party and they leave their baby at their house sleeping because they don't want to bother her and like have the responsibility of her I guess. She ends up going missing I believe. I think I can't really exactly remember but I know something happens with the baby and now everyone thinks it's the couple's fault and they're supposed to be like this really happy loving couple and then they start having these all these tensions between them because they start learning more and more about each other and things that they never knew about and the neighbors get involved it's just really crazy like i love that book and i really love the mystery i never saw like anything coming and i kind of want to reread it now because i remember really enjoying it so that one i remember loving so yeah that was a good one another one that i read is night film by marisha pestle this one i haven't read in years this woman named ashley cordova ends up dead in this warehouse and everyone thinks that it's a suicide. An investigative journalist named Scott McGrath believes that she was murdered. He has this weird like past. Ashley's father is a director of horror movies who hasn't been around in like 30 years. No one knows what's going on with him. Scott starts becoming like really really into this case. He gets really involved and like angry about it and he just really wants to find out what's going on as another body turns up. He just feels like he has to find out who actually killed her and what's going on with her dad and it's very creepy. I love the images in it and I do like that it's like a film aspect to it because I love like Hollywood and like that life. I remember really enjoying that one. It has been a long time since I read it but I remember Scott he was very somehow very involved with like the director. Something happened like his wife divorced him during all this time and so it just brings up all this past tension with him. It's just like really interesting and very dark, but yeah, that's another good one. Okay, another one that I read by Marisha Pestle is Never World Wait. This is actually a YA thriller that I actually really enjoy. I mean, I wasn't that impressed with it, but it was pretty good. So we follow this girl named Beatrice whose boyfriend was killed in a mysterious way. They don't really know what happened. Her and her friends get back together after all this time at this like lake house where they have all these memories and even where her boyfriend was killed. And this man turns up and tells them that they have a way to find all the answers. They are driving, they get stuck in this car accident, and time just like stops. And they have to continue reliving this one day over and over again as they learn more and more about each other and what happened that day that her boyfriend got killed. They have to make a really horrible decision at the end to continue on living. They're all stuck in this car accident right now. And in order to get out of it, they have to make a choice as to who lives and who dies. It's very intense concept of it, kind of like Groundhog Day, but in a very dark way, I guess. But I did really like that one, but it's not quite as like thrilling, but it is pretty interesting, of course. The next one I read is called The Chalkman by CJ Tudor. This book follows a boy named Eddie. It goes back in to 1986 when him and his friends used to draw chalk figures to each other as like messages. And a chalk figure message ends up turning up that leads him to a dead body. 30 years later, we follow Eddie again, and he's starting to get these creepy chalk man messages again. One of the messages turns out that his friend is dead, so he gets back involved with this case from his past and has to discover 
who's killing them and like why. So that one I remember really liking. I think I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. It is very creepy and I did like the concept of it a lot. I thought it was really interesting. It's been a long time since I read it but that's another recommendation if you guys are looking for more thrillers. Another YA thriller that I read is 10 by Gretchen McNeil. This book follows these teens who are trying to have a great time. They go for this weekend escape, you know, ready for boys and booze and all that stuff. And then they get this DVD that has a really threatening message on it. One by one, the friends all start turning up dead. So they have to, of course, discover who is killing them and all these secrets emerge. You know, the usual thriller story. That one I did actually really like. I have a hard time with YA thrillers, but that one I enjoyed, even though it was kind of your basic storyline with, you know, teens escaping and going away for the weekend, like getting drunk, no one really remembers what's happening, you know, the relationships are all really tense, but I did really enjoy that one as well. Okay, this is taking a long time and I apologize. Okay, the next thing I'm going to be telling you about is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Okay, this book I was not a huge fan of, it was kind of boring to me, I guess I didn't realize it was going to take place on a cruise ship. Anyway, we're following this woman named Lo Backlog, Blacklog, something like that, and she is a travel journalist and gets to take this trip for an assignment on a cruise, and there's a very limited amount of people on there, so it's like she's so excited, everything's really fancy, and all, you know, it's a beautiful cruise ship, beautiful cruise life that she gets to live for right now. She then ends up seeing a woman get thrown overboard, but nobody believes her because everyone in their cabins is accounted for. She has to basically solve this mystery on her own. I remember not liking this one, I think I didn't realize it took place on a ship even though when you look at the cover it's literally like a circular window that would be on a cruise ship but I guess I thought it would actually be like in a cabin but it's a cabin on a boat anyway I was not a huge fan of this one but it's just you know another thriller another one by Ruth Ware is called in a dark dark wood this one I don't honestly remember anything about and I feel really bad because I even looked up a summary and it wasn't even that good of a summary. This girl hasn't seen one of her friends in years and then they end up reconnecting. Okay, here we go. In a dark, dark wood follows this woman named Leonora. She gets invited on this little, like, weekend escape in the forest, I think. And she hasn't seen these people in years and she gets this, but she gets invited and she decides to go anyway even though she knows she's not gonna have that much of fun. But all these secrets, of course, emerge as I always have to say because it's basically the same story over and over again, but I feel, really, this is literally the same storyline for everything, but I feel like I like this one better than The Woman in Cabin 10, but I also wasn't that impressed with it, but I remember my roommate from college really liking it, so I might give it another chance. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, the next thriller that I read is The Woman in the Window, and that one I talked about a little more recently. This one follows this woman named Anna who suffers from PTSD and agoraphobia, so she hates leaving her house. She's scared to leave her house and just doesn't want to deal with anybody, but she has to have everything like delivered to her because she just doesn't want to leave. She stares out her window a lot and ends up kind of spying on her neighbors a lot and ends up making friends with the woman across the street and then she watches the woman get killed so no one believes her because she's constantly drinking she's constantly taking different drugs and she gets involved in this case she can't really prove what she saw because no one believes her and they're living as though nothing happened so i did really like this one it wasn't quite as good as i was expecting it to be i do really want the movie to come out it's supposed to come out in may but obviously coronavirus but I'm hoping the movie's better than the book because I just was not that impressed with the book and I felt like the mystery of it wasn't that good. It wasn't as thrilling as I was anticipating it being, but it is really sad and just kind of messed up, so I felt really bad about that. <laughs> okay, the next one we have is called An Anonymous Girl. This one is by Greer Hendricks. This book follows this girl named Jessica. She needs money, so she signs up to participate in this like psychological study by this woman named Dr. Shields. And Dr. Shields starts asking some really intense and invasive questions as the study goes on and on. Jess is really freaked out because she feels like Dr. Shields really knows who she is and like knows her own secrets. They end up getting more involved with each other and Dr. Shields makes Jess participate in these really messed up experiments because Dr. Shields isn't who she seems and she has this really messed up relationship and this life that's just pretty bizarre. But overall, I really liked that book. I was actually more impressed by it than I had anticipated it being and it definitely took a different turn than what I was expecting but I did really enjoy that one as well. One of my more recent reads, The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. It's pretty much the same description as I have to give every book pretty much in a thriller but it follows this group of adults who reunite for New Year's and they reunite every year and they kind of just fall into their roles that they had when they were in college together. While they are kind of pretending things are as they've always been, 
things are far from that. Relationships are very tense. There's a lot of jealousy and betrayal between them. And they just kind of have to put on a happy face. But more things start being revealed between the friend group. One of them turns up dead. We're going through the days leading up to the death and seeing what could have caused it and who would have caused it. I actually really enjoyed this book. I think I gave it four to five stars. But I was actually impressed with it, even though it is one of your basic thrillers. I love where the storyline went. I liked the tension between the characters. I thought it was really well written. It wasn't super, like, petty. A lot of it started to feel a little more obvious at the end. You started to expect a lot of what was happening. But overall, I really enjoyed that one. And it is one of the most recent ones that I finished. Another YA thriller that I read that I forgot to mention earlier is Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. This one I actually love because, like I said, I have a really hard time getting into YA thrillers. I mostly lean toward adult thrillers, but this one was so good. So we start following this girl named Casey, who is a new girl in this town. She basically has to start living a new life when she moved in with her father. So she's living with a stepbrother, a stepsister, and a stepmother. Of course, not always a good time. So she makes these two friends who she starts doing pretty much everything with. But then one day they stop inviting her to do stuff and like to hang out, and she's kind of weirded out by that because they're usually with her all the time so she doesn't really know what's going on and then they go to this party and don't invite Casey and Casey's kind of freaking out as to why she's not invited and then one of the girls ends up not returning from that party. People start turning to Casey to find out what's going on even though she's the new girl and doesn't really know what's happening obviously she's not really involved, she doesn't know what's going on with her friends, and now she doesn't really know who to trust. This book reminded me a lot of Pretty Little Liars with its twists and like deceit and those types of things. I actually really like the characters. I remember, so Jane and Bailey, the two friends, they have this really special bond, but it was more weird, but it's a really good book. I really enjoyed Little Monsters, and like I said, I do have a hard time with YA thrillers, but this one was so good, and I did actually really like the Pretty Little Liars aspect to it, that just, it was really fun, it was hard to like know what was going to happen next, so that's one of my other favorite YA thrillers. Alright, some spooky books that I've read more recently that aren't quite thrillers, but I guess it would be more like in the horror genre, which I have not read a lot of horror books, so if you have, definitely hit me up with recommendations. But I have read The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I'm currently watching the show and I'm loving it a lot more than the book. The book follows this group of adults who get invited to stay at Hill House by Dr. Montague who is trying to actually see if the house is actually haunted. And we follow Eleanor who is living now with these people named Theodora and we got Luke and Dr. Montague. The house is pretty much possessed by like poltergeists. Everything's kind of controlled. A lot of weird stuff starts happening and they kind of start blaming each other, but also they realize that the house may actually be haunted. And I don't really know, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I'm really liking the show a lot better. I like the family aspect to it and just how dark it is and creepy and sad. It's very emotional, um, but the book itself is kind of strange. Basically, the house is possessed and it's trying to find someone own it. I mean, at the, the ending was very strange to me. But it wasn't that scary. I really like scary stuff, but I feel like I don't really scare easily, especially while reading. The last two books that I've read that are horror, well, I'm currently reading one. I read The Shining, which I don't need to give a huge explanation for that. The Shining, I actually like the movie better only because I saw the movie first. The book, I just like, I don't get scared while reading it. I heard it's supposed to be really scary, like don't read it at night, that type of thing, but I wasn't that big a fan. And actually the same is happening with It right now. I love the It films so much. I've only seen the, like, the new ones. I haven't seen the original. But the book to me right now is it's good, but it's not really like spooky. Like I mean it is, but it doesn't really scare me. Like I want to feel scared while reading, but I don't. Okay guys, those are every single thriller that I've read and every single horror book that I'm reading or currently reading. I haven't read a lot of horror novels, but I've read a ton of thrillers and I hopefully will find some more that I like. That is all I have for you guys today. Sorry this was really long. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to give it a nice little thumbs up. If you want to keep following me on this booktube journey, please subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Gobble. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!